Living out in the streets and drug habits, some say they just can't beat muggers and robbers, no place to be saved. But you've been my protection every Thank you. 
sheep or your pastor. Because of that, God, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. We are thankful, God, and we bless your holy name. For your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to all generations. It is you, God, who has created man as a little Lord and angels. You have crowned us with honor and with glory. You have gave us dominion of all that you have created. So, God, because of that, we realize that no weapon formed against us so ever prosper. We give you glory, God. Move in this house. Touch the set man of this house. Put him down in the storehouse of your wisdom, God. Give him the words to say to give to your people on this day. Somebody, somebody's in need of a word from you, God. Let him not leave this house tonight, this day. And today be touched by you. We pray, God, for those that's watching us through the beer streaming yours, God. We thank you, God. We're two or three gather in your name. You have declared that you will be in the midst. As long as you show up, God, we realize we got the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Bethel. This morning's responsive reading is entitled Dignity of Man. We will be reading Psalm 8 and 1 John 3, 1 through 3. I'll read the first, you'll read the second, we'll read the last together. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who have displayed your splendor above the heavens. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained,
For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the path of the seas. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is altogether. And every man that hath this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. God bless you. Good morning. Let us remain standing for a hymn of praise. Oh, how I love Jesus. There is a name. There is a I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ears. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love. Who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood. The sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Help us sing it now. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, Cause he first began. Put your hands together and bless him this morning. Amen. Good morning, Bethel. Happy Thanksgiving. Help me welcome our streaming audience and everybody here in the sanctuary at 515 Dow Street. This morning, we have a few announcements for our prayer topic of day 11. The month of November is mental health. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of God. Our pastor and staff is committed to the safety here at Bethel, and so we encourage everybody to wear your mask to keep everybody safe, um, as well as practice uh, social distancing. Um, on uh, next Sunday, if you all would go and see Brother Terry Davis Sr., we have the men's choir for any of those that are all interested in joining. Um, the choir itself is coming back in preparation for our New Year's Eve service on Saturday, December the 31st. The next rehearsal will be um, once we go and see Shelby after service. <laughs> Women's Fellowship Dinner with the Bishop Bloomer at uh, December the 2nd at 6 p.m. Registration is required. Clerk International Assemblies and George Bloomer Ministries present the Conclave, the service of the Apostolic Affirmation and Episcopal Elevation, Friday, December the 9th at 7.30 p.m. and Saturday, December the 10th at 12 p.m. noon. Um, our own Tamila has uh, released her journal. Can we give her a hand clap for that? The Processing Chamber. It's a 40-day journal and it is available for purchase. Um, the Most Right Reverend George G. Bloomer and the Clerk International Assemblies present the Episcopal Consecration and Elevation of the very own Al Morgan to the Sacred Office of Bishop on the 10th day of December in the year of our Lord 2022 
at noon at 515 Down Street, North Carolina, Durham. Make sure that you all come here. He is our very own. He is one that we love, and he deserves this. Amen. Our worship services are streaming or live in person, 9, 8, uh, 9.45 a.m. with our altar prayer and regular church service starts at 10 a.m. Tuesday night Bible study um, is streaming virtually online at 7.30 p.m. And our virtual services, uh, the general's briefing on warfare ecology from now until the end of the year. Our live services starting 4 p.m. on Tuesday through Wednesday and Thursday only. We invite you to join us as we open the week in prayer Sunday night at 8 p.m. when you dial in with the number 1540-792-0068 using the code 189558-POUND. And we close the week with prayer Friday night at 8 p.m. And lastly, if you would go and see Overseer King, or on December 18th, we're actually having a birthday party, um, 4 p.m. for Overseer King. And again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the service. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's offering time in the sanctuary, amen? Come on, let's give God praise for having something to offer unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. So we're going to ask all tithers, if you will, prepare yourselves. A tithe is a tenth of what we've earned, and we want to give it back unto God. But we also want to give God an offering. Yeah, we want to assign a, our seed to something, something to our seed, if you will. And I promise you, if you'll give to God, God will give back to you. Amen? Amen. So those of you who are in the sanctuary that are going to give, we're going to ask that you stand at this time. As a matter of fact, we're going to ask everyone to stand. If we'll have everyone to stand, those that are going to give online, there are four ways to give. It's Cash App is going to be dollar sign BFWC515. We're going to text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online is to BethelFamily.org. If you're mailing your offerings to us, it's 515 Dowd Street. Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Amen. Has everyone had a chance to give? We ask you to come now at this time. Those that are giving electronically, if you'll wave at us, we just want to thank you for being liberal givers. Amen. God bless you.
I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be, give me a tissue, shall continuously be in our mouths. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Those of you that did not weather the, the rain, the rain, I know it's one of those days where uh, you look up and you see the rain pouring and you turn around, you go back to sleep. Uh, that's, that, that's the day that you curse God because you didn't do that on your job. I don't care what the situation is, but I celebrate all of you here this morning. Come on, let's give God a rousing applause and a praise. But this is the day that the Lord has made and he shall rejoice and be glad in it. I, I, I hope and I pray that you had a great that you had a great Thanksgiving. Sounds like some of y'all had a good Thanksgiving. All right. And, and so did the uncle come over that drinks too much? No, no, no. Any talk about politics or religion or no, no, no fights and nothing like that? No disagreements? Okay. Well, that, that, then then you pulled it off pretty good. Give the Lord a great big praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, I hope I have this correctly. Uh, uh, Friday night coming up. Did, was that in the announcements? Friday night coming up is the uh, dinner fellowship with the bishop and the ladies of the church. And um, I want you to uh, make sure that everybody that you know that goes here, uh, even, even people who all just watch on uh, virtually and, and no longer come into the building, um, they have to come. It's not going to be a virtual dinner. <laughs> not going to be a virtual dinner. So you're going to have to come into the uh, uh, the household of faith. And uh, you know, truth of the matter is that you're weathering everything everywhere else. That's just the, that's the mis this is an excuse. I hope this message this morning will help uh, bless you in a um, very very powerful powerful way. Then on January, I keep on saying January, on December the 9th and the, uh, the 9th and the 10th, uh, the conclave is, 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 is coming here and it's going to be a, a night of affirmation, a night of outpouring, uh, a night of just uh, reaffirming the call that is on your life. And, and that is so important. There's so many people who are really, really gifted but never been affirmed. Um, gifted, um, never been covered. Some, some people won't stay nowhere long enough to be covered. Uh, you know, you got some folks, ain't nobody said amen to me, I'll be talking about myself. Uh, you got some folks that is just, uh, you know, please don't get mad at me, but they're just crazy in their mind. And um, it ain't no demon either, because I tried to cast the demon out, and the demon said, what you calling me for? I don't even go over there. <laughs> the demon said, she don't need me, she do it by herself. And he do it by himself. I've had situations where we were in that war room. We prayed for people, and the Holy Spirit said to me, he says, what, wherefore are you here dealing with something that ain't here? The devil that you're trying to fight is home sleeping. This thing right here that we're dealing with is going on in that person's mind and their psyche. They're dealing with some, some issues, and, and they need to work those things out. And, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to, um, I finished off the, uh, the message that we were dealing with called Lost in the, Lost in the Noise last Sunday, a uh, message entitled what? Uh -huh, I thought so. Stop the Madness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, can, 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 can you imagine working all week long, uh, putting in 40 hours for a 20-minute message and people forget it in two seconds. Every mother in this room, every parent in this room, turn to somebody and say, I know exactly what he's talking about because that's what happened when I talked to my children. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for the word this morning? Yes. You'll find me reading out of Genesis chapter number 32, verses, the, the message is really, the message is really, really in the scripture. Genesis chapter number 32, verses 22 through 32. Ah, and um, 
Genesis 33, 1 through 5. Genesis 33, 1 through 5. And I want to use this as an opening um, for you not to be uh, moved, hindered, or bothered during this um, holiday season and as a lead-in to this time that we are fellowshipping on and calling it the conclave. I'm going to speak to a few of you, and, and, and I pray that your spirit would open up to receive this word in the name of Jesus. Uh, week before last, uh, or Sunday, last Sunday, I shared with you um, about how the Lord was speaking to me about us going into this, uh, how could I say it, a tridemic, where there's going to be all different types of diseases coming and colliding at, 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 at one time. And I, so I went back into some teachings that we've had and some statements that I made about it. And, you know, when the Lord gives me something, I'm sort of kind of nervous. And so a lot of times I sort of kind of like, you know, uh, hope, my disclaimer is I hope that it's not going to come to pass, even though I know that it's not me, it's God speaking. And um, because in terms of, and I'm not a doctor, <laughs> nor do I play one on TV, <laughs> uh, but when it comes down to, when it comes down to this thing that we call the pandemic, um, when it comes down to the pandemic, we haven't even seen the beginning of the pandemic, okay? We haven't seen the beginning of the pandemic. And um, the massless people that you see everywhere is as a result of things that they hear and who they listen to. So if you listen to Fox News, you ain't gonna wear a mask. You listen to CNN, you'll put one on. You listen to MSNBC, you might, you might not. It's just, you know, because we live in an opinionated world where opinionating opinions and opinions and opinions and opinions and opinions. Okay, good. Um, when the vaccine came along, it kind of gave a comfort for, a, for, for, for about six, seven months till they found out that what they gave us could only help us for six or seven months. And um, sh should I stop talking about this or should I tell you? Um, and so you have, you have Democrats, you have Republicans, you have independents, you have, you have uh, conspiracy theorists, you have QAnons, you have all different types of information. And anybody that is spending a whole lot of time on the internet, swiping all the time, your brain is already fried. You really, really need an internet uh, cleanse. An internet cleanse. I came up in a time in the day where this was the phrase, don't believe everything you read. And that was during the day when it was newspapers. In the age of the internet, if it's on the internet, people immediately believe it. No, don't, no, no, did they see it and retweet it immediately? That's the world that we're, that's the world that we're, 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 we're living in. The, the, the decision to get states and stuff like that to stop with the masks and stop the social distancing and, and, you know, you don't have to sanitize like you were, so that whole phrase, all that thing, that, that scare, all that was happening, was a financial decision. The country was shut down. They were losing gazillions of dollars. And so they had to figure out a way to get you comfortable enough to go back into restaurants. What also happened during this two-year period of time almost three year period of time is that they said that about 30 million new millionaires were made in two years in the United States of America. 30 million people came up with an idea to facilitate a need 
me, that is that is that is powerful, powerful, powerful. It's a financial decision, and that financial decision got us where we are. There are people who've had the vaccine and still got the virus. Am I telling the truth? Or am I telling the truth, you know. So be sure you make sure you're vaccinated. Yeah. And there's people who ain't been vaccinated, and the virus don't even come nigh their dwelling. You know, so, 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 you know. But as long as there are unvaccinated people, there will be a continuance of different strains, strains of this, what, what, what we're going for. And some people say, well, you don't know what's in the vaccine, and you don't know what's in this, you know, and, and that's true, and you got to have faith in God. You, you, you. You don't know what's in you, you. You don't know whether you're eating beef or whether you're eating horse, and you eat that, don't you? It's fear, and I'm not suggesting that you go take the the. the, the every person needs to work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling, with regard, fear, respect, and uh, uh, and 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 with education, understanding it. But the Lord spoke to me. And he said, our children were going to be attacked. Hospitals were going to fill back up, so on and so forth like that. So I wanted to do a quick disclaimer so they don't put me in the category of being a false prophet. And so I would say, I hope it don't come to pass. Um, I was leaving the uh, house yesterday. And as I was walking by on the news, this terminology that started here about three, four months ago, was on the news and it blew me away and that was trendemic how there are three different viruses colliding with each other at one time but now the attack is on the children this respiratory type of a thing and um, hospitals are Filled. The report says that 2,000, upwards of 2,000 to 2,800 people in the United States of America are dying a day from this virus. It's not on the news, is it? Because to put it on the news right now is bad for business. Bad for business. Say to somebody, come on, tell it to us. What was what, what, what? It's bad for business. Bad for business. And so it's so important that you that 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 you really understand how important it is to protect yourself and to be around the right people and and um, wear a mask and so on and so forth like that. Lastly, this is this is I don't want to frighten you, but this is what I'm seeing. Um, I believe that this thing started off in a lab. Well, not in the lab, but I start. Well, I do believe it started off in the lab in the beginning, but I do believe that it got into the human stream through eating exotic things. I've traveled around the world, traveled to China and stuff like that. You know, uh, you know, anybody in here like sushi? You got, if you like sushi, raise your hand real high. Good. Uh, let me tell you something. If you if you went to Japan and you had sushi in Japan, when you come back to America. It, you work real, real hard on you to even try to, to try to work with it. In Japan, the restaurant we went to in Japan, the fish that you're going to eat is swimming in the pool in front of you at the table. You pick your fish out. They snatch the fish out of the water. The fish is flapping, and he takes the knife, and he begins to do the fish while the fish is moving. And then lay that thing on top of that rice. Hey, Shaya. See, see, because see, you don't, you, you, you. It, how many of you here like pizza? If you had pizza in Italy, I promise you. <laughs> okay? Th th that's just the point that I'm making. Uh, you, 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 you know, uh, here in America, it's all about the dollars. It's all about the fast food. So stuff that we eat and stuff, we think we got some. We ain't got what they it, it, it just say. It's a, I told you what they did to Maurice. They took Maurice, get up and get out of the restaurant. He, he asked him for steak sauce in, in, in a French restaurant. They don't do those steak sauce there. It's an insult to them. 
and they ain't got no ketchup for your french fries either. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I believe as I traveled, especially in China and places like that, they, if it moves, they eat it. Don't let nobody tell you nothing about it. They eat everything. Everything. We were going down the street. I was getting some suits made. And you know, you go, you get tailored for the suits. And they say, come back in three hours. Three hours. Come back in three hours. So you go have lunch or whatever. And you go back, your suit is made. And we're walking down these little intertwined streets and so on. So like that. There's a lot of food outside. It's, it's tested. It's, 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 it's an amazing place. And we walked past this place. And there was these huge spiders. Huge spiders. And I'm thinking, no, what am I serious about? And I'm trying to wonder to myself, who, what? They eating them. They eating the spiders like the spiders is crabs. You keep on going down, I'm telling the truth, keep on going down the strip, and there's snakes in tanks. And they're snatching live snakes out cutting the snakes, draining the blood, and they drink in snakes' blood like it's taking the like it's shots. And they live until 190-something years old. That's how I believe this virus got into the land. But I also believe that there's some chemical and biological warfare going on also where they are fighting us through chemical substances as is spoken about in Revelation chapter number six, uh, that fourth seal, that horse hepatite, and it says he will kill with the beast of the field, which means that a disease will get into the life, the, into our food, food chain and begin to poison people. And the Bible tells us that if we shall eat any deadly thing, it shall not harm us. But, I mean, if you, if you can't believe God for a headache, you can forget uh, believing him for anything else. So we're going through certain crises and certain things that are happening inside our lives we need to really, really need to focus on. How many of you in here um, um, have gotten COVID and gotten over it? Get your hand up high. Get, get your hand up high. All right, see that? that let's look around the room. That's, 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 that's quite a few people. Few people. Good. Okay, now watch this here. How many of you have gotten COVID, gotten over it, and got it again? Look at that. That, 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 that. Okay? Now, how many of you have gotten COVID, gotten over it, gotten COVID, gotten over it, and gotten it again? All right, so that, I need to pray that the third time don't hit you. That goes to show you that the blood of Jesus is the most powerful serum on the planet. I'll say this has nothing to do with the message. I don't even know why I went this way. Uh, but I'll say this. This vaccine thing that we're into right now is on and popping forever in our lifetime. The children that are being born will be born into a vaccine nation, into a world of vaccinations. And it's never going to have vaccines for every single thing. And it's a setup to bring about the mark of the beast. Okay? So, have your pick. Know who your God is. All right. Um, I'm going to minister today. How many of you, how many of you have ever been in a battle with yourself? You're going to have to talk to me today. Come on, I'm not going to. You've been in the battle with yourself. So you're not fighting. You, 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 you're fighting yourself. Huh? How many is fighting yourself? Uh, how many of you have had, have had a conversation with yourself? And, and a long conversation. And, and it, to, to the point where, you know, somebody walked into the room and said, who are you talking to? Right? Who are you talking to? You, you're cleaning up and something like that, and something hits you, and you start talking to yourself. And then I, I, cause then I, but you shouldn't have did that in the first place. If you did that, you, you say that to me again. I'll punch you in your face. You're going to punch who in their face? I mean, you're really, really having this battle with yourself. Well, there's a, there's, there, there, there's a story in the Bible that deals with self-battling. And um, I told you last week 
as I was on my way to somewhere for Thanksgiving that I wasn't going to spend Thanksgiving with the family the way that I normally spend Thanksgiving with the family. And I shared with you how that, uh, um, how that COVID uh, over the past three years have isolated me and has revealed some things to me that I didn't fully, fully understand. I didn't know it until, uh, until that time uh, came. Um, and I begin to feel uh, um, that I'm here for someone else's babysitting or amusement. And, and that, that, that can't be good. And so how do, I, how do I break away from that? And who's going to care if I'm gone? And so when I made the announcement that I would be gone, I found out that a whole lot of people care. Because all of their fund and excitement was coming out of banking on that I would be there to host and bankroll it. I wish I had a church right now. To host and to bank, not just, not, not, not just to host it, but to host it, that, 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 that there would be lamb chops and, 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 and uh, lamb chops and turkey and ham. There's going to be like eight different types of meat. Uh, we're going, we, 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 we going to dad's house. We're go, we, we, we going to bishop's house. And, that's a, and, 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 and they go in and they get what they're going to get. And they, and, 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 and they get out and there were some things that you wanted to do, but you didn't do it because you were trying to host them. And then once they're done with it, it's too late to do what you wanted to do. So you wind up ending the rest of the holiday watching a television program. When it really, was, really wasn't in your plans for you to do, for, 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 for you to do that. And, and so that break away. And I started getting calls from my family members that said, are you serious? You're really not cooking? Right. I'm really, really not cooking. But they don't believe me. They don't believe me. They don't believe me. And when they called me, I was gone. I was living life like it's golden. I was enjoying myself. And then they started talking about how the food that they ate during this time, it wasn't even good. See, when you're a good host, you're just a good host. Touch your neighbor and say, I host good, I host good. So that was the battle and the struggle and the fight that I was having uh, within myself to help to, uh, to help define myself and to define myself because of all the stuff that I've been listening to that helps to shape or, 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 or mold me as a person. Good. Done with that. Watch this here. Here's another person in the Bible who... Here's another person in the Bible who has battled with himself. And his name is Jacob. And I'm going to talk to the Jacobs in many of you this morning for a few moments. And, and there'll be melancholy going on. There'll be a little laughter, a little angriness, a little... Uh, you might feel uh, several expressions as we read this text. But it reads just like this. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed, prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh. Now, we've all heard this story one time or another. How many have heard this story one time or another about Jacob wrestling with the angel in, 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 in the dark? Good. All right. Here we go. And he saw that he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. Mm -hmm. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Now imagine you are wrestling with a supernatural force, and your will is so strong that the supernatural force is begging you to let it go. So just look at somebody and say, that's what's about to happen in my life. It, angels better stay away from me. Because if you come nigh my dwelling, I'm getting my blessing. I'm getting my breakthrough. 
and nothing by any means is going to stop me from getting my blessing and my breakthrough. So if you don't want me to be blessed, all right, watch this here. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Uh-huh. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. But thy Israel. name shall be called no more Jacob, but rather a nation. You're, you, 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 you're moving from a person to a nation. Uh-huh. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men, you, and has you, prevailed. You are a prince. You're the son of a king and don't even know it. That, 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 that's why I'm wrestling and battling with you tonight in the night. Uh-huh. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask my, after my name? He said to the angel, what is your name? He said, the angel said, what, what you asking me my name for? Don't worry about what my name is. Take the blessing. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do it one more time. You know, this, this, th that, that piece right there should have been preached in somebody else's church. You, you, you trying to figure out who I am. I'm trying to put a million dollars in your hand. You ask me who I am. No, don't ask me who I am. Take the million. Uh-huh. And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen... And he called the name of the place Peniel. For, for I, I have, have seen, seen the face of God. Peniel means God's face. Uh-huh. Here we go. And my life is preserved. Yeah. And he passed over that... And he passed over Peniel. The sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not the sinew which shrank. Which All right, so it's the sinew or the, 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 the hip of a, uh, you won't get a Jew to eat that part. Uh, like a rump roast, they're not, they're, not, they're not doing that simply because of this particular thing where the angel had, okay, go, move on. Uh -huh. Which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, mm -hmm. because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh and the sinew that shrank. Yeah. Go to my next verse, next scripture. Genesis 33, verses 1 through 5. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. And you know what? Let's all do that together. So this, this part pours inside, inside your spirit. All right? One, two, three. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, Esau came. And with him 400 men. And he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto that who handsmaid. Now, I think you need to read that one more time. Okay, read, read, read it, read it one more time, and think about it, right? Because who, who is Jacob's enemy? Esau. Esau is Jacob's enemy. Who is Jacob's brother? Esau. So his greatest battle is in his what? Family. It took you all a while. This is such a slow church. Here we go, uh-huh. And Jacob lifted up his eyes. And Jacob lifted up his eyes. And looked. And looked. And behold, and behold Esau. Esau. Uh-huh, came with what? 400 men. Stop, take the scripture down. Esau is coming with 400 men. How many men does Jacob have? He got two wives, two servants, 11 sons, and he gave away all of his wealth when he decided that he was going to cross over the river. And when he gets over the river, he's leaving to go over the river because he's trying to get away from his brother. To only go over the river. And when he gets over the river, his brother is where? He's trying to get away from. Have you ever tried to get away from somebody and everywhere you turn, they right there? Here we go. And he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel. And so he said to Leah and to Rachel, say, hey, listen, you take this amount, you take five, you take, you take six and get away from it. I don't want anything wrong to happen to my kids. But that brother of mine. Is a devil because the last time I saw him, he had blood in his eyes and he swore upon everything that he was going to take me out. And this might be my day of reckoning. Here we go. 
and he put the handsmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. Mm -hmm. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times. He passed over before them, got them safe someplace, passed over before them, got into a place, bowed down himself to the ground seven times. He's going into prayer and intercession. The Jews and the Muslims pray like that. Black folks pray like this. Uh-huh. <laughs> Until he came near to his brother. Uh-huh. And Esau ran to meet him. And, and Esau him. ran to meet him. And embraced, and embraced him. him. And what? And fell on his neck. And fell on his neck. And kissed him. And kissed him. And they wept. And they wept. Imagine... You toiling all night long to get something worked out that God already worked it out. Oh, somebody say, work it out, Jesus. Work it out, work it out, work it out. Work it out, work it out. Work it out. Work it out. All right, the story real quickly. Who's, who's, who, who's Jacob and Esau's mother? Huh? Jacob and Esau's mother's what? And Rebecca's got a problem with what? She's got a problem with the order to which her sons were born. There's two sons. One is a hunter. One is a farmer. Everybody say hunter. hunter. Farmer. farmer. Say it again. Hunter. hunter. Farmer. farmer. In the scheme of ministry, a hunter is an evangelist, a farmer is a pastor. Now remember, Jacob is a pastor. His brother is a hunter. Now, the blessing goes to the firstborn. Don't have time to go into the womb, but she knows that she has a problem She's given birth to twins because they're wrestling within the womb. So where did their battles start? Their battles started in the womb. Before they were fully shaped, before they were fully formed, their battle was in the womb. Now, I know that you heard a whole lot of stories about Jacob being a manipulator, and he was uh, Jacob, da, 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 da. But the word Jacob or supplanter doesn't just mean to take something from somebody that doesn't belong to you. It also means heel catcher. So heel catcher means that you are skillful and gifted enough that when someone is raising up their heel against you, you know how to block it from getting into your head. There are things that people are coming to you with that if it gets in your head, you're going to be defeated. I, you have to say to yourself, I can't, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I was focused until such and such a person came. I worked on this thing for four years and they came and took it out of my mind in two minutes. I cannot begin to tell you how that people who have a prophetic anointing and a gift of intercessory prayer, how uh, sometimes how naive, I was going to use another word, but I'm going to use the word, how naive they are. And Satan knows through, their, uh, 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 th through them being naive that he can always make them more spiritual than they really, really are. It is impossible to be an intercessor, someone who is interceding in the realm of the spirit and the intercessor also has an opinion. I'm going to do it one more time. If you are an intercessor, the intercessors, intercessors do not pray for people. They pray as the person. So up in the glory room, of uh, up in glory, in, in, in the chambers of intercession, God has your name registered. Uh, this person is going through this over here today. The Lord now says, well, in Durham, North Carolina, uh, such and such a person is going through a relational situation, and they're about to lose it. And, 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 and no matter how much they're praying, they, they can't get victory. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to snatch off of them what they're going through, and I'm going to place it on you as the intercessor. So now, all of a sudden, the person that was arguing and complaining, all of a sudden, a calmness comes on them, but an agitation comes on you. 
that as the intercessor, you're agitated. But because you're not schooled in scripture, nor revelatorial in your time with God, you don't realize that what you're feeling ain't you, it's her. So you begin to take it personal. Great day in the morning. And everything that agitated her when it was her is agitating, is agitating you now because you're her. So now, while this spirit of intercession is on you to intercede for that particular person, all the people that person didn't like is coming your way. So now you're having problems and issues with people that you don't have problems and issues with. And when it lifts, because you're not brilliant, you still got problems and issues with people that you don't have problems and issues with people and they don't have a problem with you. It's the spirit that they're fighting. Oh, uh, no, Bethel, you ain't hearing this today. It's the spirit. And when that spirit lifts, it ain't you. Spirits. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Their battle started in the mother's womb. But let's cut to the chase real quick. Let's not make the message too long. Jacob Graham is fighting for something that is his. It's already his. It's already his. He, he gets caught up with his mother's battle and tricks his father for something that's still already his. What happens when you steal what is yours? You bought it, you paid for it, it's yours, and you say, what I'm going to do tonight when everybody sleep, I'm going to go steal that. What kind of feeling is that? Because that's exactly what happened. And I'm talking to you this morning, that's exactly what's happening to many of you today. So my message today is, My enemy and me are at peace with me. I, I know that's just a little hand clap for a few people. But here comes the slinging of the pots and the pans. Because your children is a divine setup by God to bless you and to bless your legacy. But it's also set up by Lucifer to tear the marriage apart. The two kids, the kids that you have, that your semen and your egg produced is set up to rip and to tear you as they come out. And if they can't kill you when you've given birth to them, there's an assignment to destroy you while you're alive. This battle is not coming from demons and devils on the outside. It's coming from inhibitions and issues and ideologies that goes on on the inside. And sometimes you have to shake your head. The old mothers used to say, I brought you into this world and I'll take you out. Is there any mother in this room that had that thought once or twice in your life? Now you have some parents who can never have that kind of thought because they worship their children. And people who worship their children, you can tell they worship the kid. And when you worship the kid, what happens is all different types of things start to happen to your kid as a result of your worshiping of them. You think it's an attack of the devil. It's not Satan attacking the child. It's God taking his hands off of the child because you gave that child God's glory. And anything you put in front of God, God's got to take down. You must make sure that you balance yourself when it comes down to your kids and the people that you love. Thou shall have no other gods before me. So go ahead and love your kid more than you love anything else and you're going to find your kid in all kinds of crisis, in all kinds of problems, and many times it will take an intercessor to get you out of that trial. Because your prayers ain't being heard by that because why would you be praying to God when your child is your God? Pray to your kid and see if your kid can bring you out. 
I can't get no help in here this morning. So the battle starts where? On the inside. You know the story? She goes to him. She says, go out here and cook your, cook your, cook your dad something real, real good. And I'll take the clothes and, and, and he, his, his eyes are dim. And I'm going to get you the birthright. The birthright is already his. It's already his. So he fights to get something that is his. Wow. This scripture is powerful. Because have you ever been in a struggle? A life struggle with yourself. A sexual struggle. A financial struggle. A relational struggle. Knowing what to do is right. But these voices are so strong that you give into it and you know it's wrong. Fighting with something that is on the inside of you. I don't mean to turn Sunday morning into a therapy session. But every now and then we need group therapy. If we're going to be a church together. Every now and then we need to figure out where this is coming from. We often run to the bishop and run to the pastor and say, Pastor, pray for me because I'm going through such and such thing. And then every year we go through such and such thing. Every year we go through such. Right now you have several people saying, I just can't wait till this year is over. I can't wait till 2020. What's this, 2022? I can't wait till 2022 is over so I can get in 2023. They, they complain. Right now, I can't wait to get this year over again. And you did that last year, and you did that year before last, and you did that year before last, and the year before that. Every year, you, I just can't wait till the year to go. So the year never gets good for you. Here, here's the problem. The problem is, is that you can't wait for 2022 to be over so you can get in 2023. But when you get into 2023, you bring your 2022 into 2023. So all you do is cause the thing to repeat itself over and over again. Constantly, constantly, it's the same, it's the same thing. Well, I'm going to run over here and get me a word over here. I'm going to run over here and get a word. Oh, they, they, they hot over here. The dance is made over there. And you have to, you're running, running, running around, all around the place. So simple, because you can't settle down enough to receive what God has for you. Now, I'm going to say something here that maybe you haven't considered, and then you'll Google it and find out that I'm telling the truth. When the angel showed up and he knocked out the, the, knock the hip bone out of the socket. The reason why he did that is because all swearing and all oaths that was made in the Hebrew times was made by one man taking his hand and putting it on the hand under the man's thigh and touching his seed sack. All, yeah, what? All, all oaths. All oaths that were made were oaths that were sworn against or for your children that were there or to come. One more time. That's it. Under the thigh, boy, if you take it under the thigh, so you take the hand and you remove it under the thigh, you wind up where the seed sack is at. That's the most nice and disciplined way that I say it without being milked. Well, they will milk me. I'm a cow for them. One scripture says this, I swear by my loins. What is he talking about? He's talking about the children of 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 the children, of the children that this oath that we're going to take with God is going to show up in generations to come. And so the angel that showed up and began to slap this boy around in the dark, a man. He started wrestling with this force, with this, with, the, with this man. And then he recognized that this man has got something. He recognizes that this is not a natural man. This has to be an angelic or supernatural force somehow or another because this person has the power to bless me. And when his will got strong enough, the angel that he's fighting is exhausted. The angel that he's fighting is exhausted. When I was going through my sicknesses, the angel that came to fight me got exhausted because I had decided I will not die 
but live to declare the glory of God. And whatever you have come to do, with whatever you got to do it with, I come against it now in the name of Jesus. And the battle only takes place in the dark where no one can see, where it's not clear enough for you to see clear, that's when that thing comes, starts slapping you around and you need to grab a hold of it and say, listen here, one way or the other. We can do it the easy way or we can do it the hard way. One way or the other, we gonna have victory today. I'm not going to allow you to block me or to hinder or to stop me. I know this. Now watch this here. Watch this here. When God is getting ready to bless us and God is getting ready to, 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 to move uh, on, on our behalf, he has to take into consideration us. There's a scripture that says, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to purpose. We know that. All right, so it said that, that my arrogance for, for my good, my, 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 my drinking for my good, uh, my, 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 my being strung out for my good, uh, whoring for my good. No, Bishop, for my good. Right, not while I'm doing it, after it's done. After it's done and God turns it around and gives me a testimony out of that bad boy so that I can deliver other people from going into it. Uh, when, when David said it this way in Psalms 51, verse number 13, then will I teach transgressors your ways and sinners I will convert to thee. You will not be able to treat, treat transgressors your way, teach transgressors your way, or turn sinners on if you don't experience certain things. Once you experience it, then you understand, wait a minute, don't, wait, 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 watch that, this, this, wait, 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 wait. you know, you always want to bring, uh, the, the, he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing and obtaineth the favor of the Lord. That's a new term. The, 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 the original text says, whoso findeth the wife and findeth the good thing, obtain the favor of the Lord. What is the scripture saying? The scripture is not saying for the woman to sit in church and wait for the man to find her. That's not what it's saying. What the scripture is saying is go find a wife. A wife is a female partner already married in a relationship. Say, so you want to know about marriage, don't go to somebody that's about to get married. Go to somebody that's already married. And when they begin to teach you, you're going to understand certain principles about this thing because they have the experience. Two people you should talk to when you get ready to get married. You should talk to people who are married and people who are divorced. Find out what keeps them and finds out want to make that sucker let him go. I can't get no help in here. So there, 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 there's a me that is happy. There's a me that is sad. There's a me that is confident. There's a me that is rejected. There's a me that is insecure. I'm talking about me. Me, George Bloomer, not you. There's a me. I have all these different types of me. And you mean to tell me, God, that all these things work together for the good of them that love the Lord? Yet yeah, all these things work together for the good of me who love the Lord and I'm called according to his purpose. And until I can put in order my jealous me against my confident me. And, 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 and when I'm going through my me-me's, glory be to God, and my mini-me's and my, and, and, and my mega-me's, when I'm going through all of those different types, types of experience, I have a tendency of judging you and making you want to think the way that I think. And if you follow me into that, you're going to fail because I'm only going to be me in that area for a moment. It's an emotional thing. God wants to move me out of operating and functioning out of my emotions. I got to do this today because of that. And they ain't right over there. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, if you are called what would have happened to my life if every time I got into a situation and things didn't work out my way, I'm out of here. That is proof that a person is not called the scent of God. They can't fight or stick through nothing. And when they go through their crisis and find God, a light bulb comes on, boop, oh, that was it the whole time. How is it that I could be more mad about hearing something about you with God than God is who was there when you was doing it? Bishop Noel Jones, in the end of the interview that I was having with him, said it this way. He says, I know that God is going to forgive me. When I sin, I know that God is going to forgive me. The reason why I hide it from people is because I know that people will not forgive me for what God would forgive me for. Oh, man. That's, 
that, 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 that's good. So I said, look at the interview. I said, I said so, so are you saying that you're a hypocrite? He said, well, uh, uh, yes. I said, no, you're not a hypocrite. Yes. Because the etymology of the word hypocrite means play actor, which means, Bishop, you're also a hypocrite. We're also playing, all of us are playing a role. You just got to make sure, Isaiah, that you have the right garment on when you hit the stage. You don't want to show up, glory be to God, in the murder scene dressed up like a clown. You got to make sure that you're hearing from God. Because the midst of your crisis, God is managing the crisis to give you the victory in your next season. Now here's where the good stuff comes in at. He's telling the family, my brother's going to kill me. He's telling the wives, take the children and hide them. He's selling everything that he has because he doesn't want his brother to get his children's birthright when he was the one who stole his brother's birthright. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And he is a farmer. What is he going to do? He's going to war with a spoon because his brother is coming with a sword. He knows that this brother is upset with him. They're not together. But God is working out something on the other side of this battle. My brother died, who I took care of. When my mother was sick, she says, do one thing for me, George. She said, take care of your brother because he's not going to be able to take care of himself. Wow. That's what my mother said. But that's okay if your brother is... 14, 17 years old. She said that he was 50. He's not going to be able to take care of himself, so look out for your brother. I called King. I said, King, let's set up an account, and each week you send him X amount of dollars. Uh, he'll, ask, he'll, he'll, he'll text you and say, I need a package. And always contact me before you send him the package because I know he does a little drinking, a little this, a little that, do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. That's his lifestyle. Time plus time equals influence. I start spending time with him on the phone and what have you. He gets a bank account. He starts managing his money. His money starts coming up. He assigns my niece to be his, his uh, caretaker, to care to funds. He was in the military. He's giving him $3,600 a month. He ain't $3,600 a month. But he's sick now, so he can't spend it. It's starting to stack up on top of each other. It's getting good. One of the family members finds out that one of my nieces is his caretaker and he made her the person who's taking care of handling his business. They start fighting her. They're not fighting her for taking care of him. They're fighting her because, you know, he got $18,000 in the bank now. That $18,000 looking pretty good. When you got a rent bill due and a gaslight too. Telephone disconnected. Waiting for your next paycheck. To... <laughs> Jesus. We'll work it out. If you let him, but until he does, I'm fighting the family. Oh, Uncle George, my name, Uncle George. I said, well, they, 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 he, he, that's, that's who he wants to handle his money. He doesn't want to handle his money. Leave him alone. Leave, 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 leave him alone. He dies. We called the funeral home to go pick up his body. We, he's in Washington. I'm in North Carolina. Me and overseer, as we on the phone, we call the funeral home to go pick up his body from the, from the uh, place, the hospice place he was at. Call the funeral home. He says, hey, this is a, there's a body at the funeral home. We want you to pick it up. He said, well, we'll pick it up tomorrow morning. He said, what's his name? He says, uh, uh, his name is Zachary Joseph Bloomer. Uh, who am we talking to? He's talking to uh, uh, George Bloomer. I'm his brother. George Gary Bloomer. He said, oh, Mr. Bloomer. Bishop Bloomer, he says, Bishop Bloomer that's on TV? I said, yeah, uh, Bishop Bloomer. He said, oh, wow, wow. He stopped talking about the funeral. He started talking about sermons that I've done. 
He says, normally I would need a, 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 um, a deposit and so on and so forth like that. He says, but because it's you, we're going to send somebody out there to pick him up. You tell us what we need, we'll have everything situated for you and so on and so forth like that. I said, yeah, but I need to contact the family, but they want us to get the body out of there within the next 72 hours in, in, in North Carolina, what have you. They go to the funeral parlor. My sister already picked up the body. Not only did she pick up the body, she picked him up, had him cremated. When we called her to say, uh, so where, where's that? She said, I don't know. I don't know. You don't have to have a body in order to have a funeral service. If you think you do that, then you're sacrilegious. To, to this moment right now, he hasn't had a funeral, home going service, anything like that. That act ripped and torn the family to smithereens. And it was the first battle in the family in all the years that I've been alive that I didn't have nothing to do with. And I am so happy. I stand there. I have nothing to do with it at all. Until an attorney called me and said, you're the trustee over your brother's estate. Sister's the caretaker of it. And family's trying to get his estate, what have you. By this time, we're looking at about 50000 now. Oh, George, you just want to take his money. Let's be clear. Most of the money that's in there, George gave it to him. <laughs> that that $3,600 that he was getting had to pay for his car note, his apartment. His other, what was that? He only had $400 a month for his pocket. That's $100 a week to spend. Some of y'all sitting in here don't have that to spend a week. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. I'm preaching the message, no bitterness, no angry, no anger, no bitterness, no, no, no revenge. I'm preaching the message of uh, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. I'm te 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 teaching all these different types of things. Trying to hold together people's requests. People, people give you requests. They say, do such and such a thing for me. What I'm going to say here is going to start trouble. But somebody said, let the trouble begin. <laughs> hear me, hear me, hear me, very careful. It's going to start trouble right here. On Thanksgiving, Maurice Rogers was in his house eating on Thanksgiving. Maybe not as much as you or what you would eat, but he was able to leave the rehab and go to his house. He, um, he can't talk. There's a lot of damage to his brain. So we need a miracle that he cannot talk. And he's learning how to swallow. He can only stand for maybe a minute or so. And then he's too weak to, to, his brain is not sending the messages to all the places it needs to go to. Kim, one night we're on our way to preach someplace and we're going to drive for three hours. Or for four hours. I don't know how many we're going to drive. He gets into the car. And he's ready to go. So I get in the truck. We're ready to go. We go to the gas station. We get to the gas station. And I know that he pulls up to the tank. And he slows down. And he slumps over on the side. He gets out of the car. He goes into the gas station. He gets a Coke. He drinks it real fast. He comes back. But somehow or another, he can't manage or jumpstart this thing that he's been playing with for a long time. This diabetes thing is serious. Once they put a tag on your thing where you have to tag it, that's, at that point, 
Stop telling yourself you can have this piece of cake. You can't have it. Stop telling yourself this. You're going down quickly. He has an attack in the car. He zones out completely. He's under the steering wheel. I got to pick him up. I receive supernatural strength. I pick him up, put him in the back seat of the car, and drive back to the house. Call Victor. Victor comes over to the house. By this time, uh, he's getting better. He's regulating and so on and so forth like that. And we go on the we go on the trip. While we're driving, he says this to me. He said, I thought I almost died. He said, I saw myself like I was getting on a ship and I was going, but you kept on calling me back, Bishop. You kept on saying, are you all right? And I said, why is this keep on saying, you all right? I'm going on this cruise ship. You know, that cruise ship was one of his desires so it's how the deaf angel comes to make you think that you're going on a voyage that you desired. Ah, that's what he told me. And then he said this to me. He said, there are people who are dependent on me. He said, I don't know what's going to happen at the church that I'm at and what I'm doing at the church. That's the church. Now, he don't know what happened. He said, but they depend on me. So what I need you to do, Bishop, is look out for them if you can. That's a request. It's a request that means absolutely nothing at the time he's talking to me about it because everything is fine. But is he prophesying of a time and a day that the thing that he cares about the most or cares about is going to go through a crisis. Yeah. And then this happens. So now I have to make sure within my power I can grant his request. Sermon's over when I finish this here. I can grant his request. But when you start interceding, you're not praying for the person anymore. You become the person. And many intercessors that are sitting in this room know how to do prayer intercession. You don't know how to do financial intercession. And I switch places with you if you want me to. Where I can just pray for you. Because the request that Maurice had was not for prayer. It was for if anything were to happen to me. Take care of such and such a person who is around and take care of this, that, that, that. And in order to take care of them, I have to finance certain things about them. Am I preaching bad yet? Which means that while you're sitting up trying to get well, I'm walking around unhealthy, unwell, managing what you mismanaged when you had the helm of the ship. Which means that any abuses that you put up with that cause you to fail, I'm going to face those abuses, but I'm going to put them correctly. And when, it, when it's placed correctly, then the person who is being corrected might not can't handle it. Because it's one thing to help a person out and you're sleeping with them. It's a whole nother thing to help a person out and that ain't your cup of tea. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. And so if I'm helping you and you ain't my cup of tea, it's coming out of my heart. If I'm helping you and I'm sleeping with you, it's coming out of my heart. <laughs> and there's two different types of hearts, you know. <laughs> you weren't slow on that, were you? <laughs> Let's close this message this morning, Angela. <laughs> Are you with me here? So you start battling within yourself. How do I grant the request? Don't let me go until you bless me. With a person who's trying to get away from the blessings that you're trying to give them. 
because of all of the psychological what have you. This church is successful because of the intercessors that is in this place. If there wasn't intercessors, and some you know and some you don't know, if there was not intercessors in this place, we would have not made it through the storm that was in front of us. Okay, let me, let, me, let, let me preach this part. When Jacob is going over the sea, they believe that any time you cross the river, across the sea, the minute you cross it, they believe that there were spirits that came up out of the water. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. That's the reason why that's written there in the book of Genesis. They believe that spirit. And when they went across, in the, they put stones down so anybody else come, they can see that there is a foundation that was laid by holy people who crossed. There's a river that you're about to cross. And, and, and the waters are calm until you step in it. When you step in it, it starts raging and getting out of order. As long as you stay back from it, it's calm. See, that's the, that's the flip side to the Bethesda. The Bethesda pool was troubled, and then you step in it, and it calms. This is the opposite. I'm telling you that every direction that you're going into is going to be turbulence. But turbulence does not take place on earth. In order to have turbulence, you got to be in the air. On the earth, you get gridlock and traffic jams. In the air, there is no traffic jams. There is no gridlock, but there's turbulence. So if you're going through a season of turbulence, it's because you're flying high now. And the complaints that you used to have about being gridlocked and can't move, stop complaining. This juggling and this turbulence is suggesting that God has lifted you up to an area woo, of supernatural strength and power. This is the reason why the shifting and the clashing is going on in this season. This is the reason why all the hell is breaking out in your family, amongst your children. All this, all this is going on for what reason? Because you're flying high. I dare you to spread your wings for a few moments and don't fly, just soar. Allow the wind of the Holy Spirit to carry you above all of the struggles that you've had in the past. Because this is your day. This is your season. This is your time. This is your turn. You sang a song. You sang a song. And you sang a song, and the song sounds like says, oh, "All nation and generation." Watch this here. He's changing you from a name to a nation. Nations. Nations. Ha, stop. You, 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 you don't get it yet, do you? You still trying to be Browns and the Bloomers and the Johnsons. God is doing what? Changing you to what?
I want you to stand up. I want you to look over that congregation. That's what happened when you started singing. That's what happened when you started singing. Every attempt of the devil to destroy your life has been broken. He changed your name. He changed your name. He changed your name. God is changing your name. Nations. just here to sing you're here for me to protect the gift that is in your life and on your life be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and according, according to purpose may the legacy of your mom and your dad be made manifested in your life in the name of Jesus every struggle and battle that you've had Bethel be resolved right now he's changed you from a name to a nation and in that nation has given you an impartation for generations to come no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper I'm settling the battle that I have within me and I'm walking in the liberty and the peace of the Holy Ghost from this day forward in Jesus' name. And that's the word of the Lord for you today. Give God praise. Somebody better shout in this place. Somebody better shout in this place. Jesus Na sakoro go ikata na 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 ma shanda na na bo si ke da ba
myself, tired of fighting with myself, I'm going to let go and let you have your way. It's well with my soul. screen for you believe me I know it's late but you got to have this impartation this morning he shakaba I, I felt like somebody just got yourself back I, I got my I got, got 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 myself back I got myself back I snatched it from those forces that had it ah shakaba sakobo rokodobo sakataraba ah nananabosa I gotta go Here's what I'm thankful for. Number one. They'll get it in a minute. Thankful for those that don't change me. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to have to receive me as me. Because my days of being somebody else is over. Uh-huh. Thankful for those that are there for me in my time of need. Is there anybody that you that came to mind when that was said? I mean, just just, just came to your came to your head. Uh huh. Watch this. Thankful for those that don't ask me to go against the beliefs that are important to me. Your battle's coming to an end. Uh huh. Thankful for those that respect my privacy. My God. Uh huh. Thankful for those that are happy that I am happy. I am ecstatic when I see people just happy. Father, I bless this house this morning in the name of Jesus. And I give your name praise for what you're doing and how you're raising up and how you're moving. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, you already know I'm not done with this message, but God's going to do some powerful, powerful things. Give the Lord a hand clap. Let's receive our offering today. Overseer King is speaking out today, and so uh, me and Graham's left uh, with the helm of the ship today. So when you see me slip, in a few moments, that's where we're going to be moving. Uh, all those, that, that was your tithe and your offering, it belongs to the Lord. Though four ways that you can sow your seed. Oh, God, that song is in my spirit. All nations. What's, what's the opening to it? Lord, you're beautiful. Lord, Get your tithe and your offerings. Wonderful. Your Taroma seeds, lay it on the altar. Your tithe and your offerings in the bucket. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you.
Four ways to sow your seed. Cash app, dollar sign BFWC515. Text to give, text Bethel to 844-888-9183. Online giving, BethelFamily.org. Or mail to 515 Dow Street, Durham, North Carolina, 27701. Tarot Seed. Cash App, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at BishopBloomer.com. PayPal, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Father, bless the giver as well as the receiver. Multiply every gift. Give it back onto your people. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Softly, just like that. George, like that, bow those heads. One minute, bow those heads, bow those heads, bow those heads. I want every person in this room that can find one of the three dimensions that I'm going to call to get the seed and come and lay it at the apostles' feet as a thanksgiving offering. I shared with you last week how I needed to pull a family out of a situation and I'm just a little short of completing that task. And I need your help. Those that can sow a seed of 100, those that can sow a seed of 50, those that can sow a seed of 20, get it and start walking this way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe that there's seven of you that can do 100, there's seven of you can do 50, there's 20 of you that can do 20. Get it and just drop it at the altar in the name of Jesus quickly. I want to do this in the next two minutes. Start moving now. If you're doing it by uh, Cash App, uh, uh, the, the GGB Ministries, or there, yeah, there it goes. You Cash Apping, that's what you're doing in the name of Jesus. Release it, release it. Get a mic, Evelyn, and share that testimony. Get it in the name of Jesus. Everyone is sowing. If you're sowing through through uh, through technology, wave it in the air. I'm sowing. I'm sowing. I'm sowing. I'm sowing. I'm so in. If you need to put it on your card, someone is here to help you with this. Nations and generations will lift you up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I pray now? Has everyone given? Is everyone giving? Everyone giving? Okay, they're still coming. Somebody clap those hands. Lift you up, he'll lift you up. All nations,
give the Lord a praise. Now, I believe that there's a few people that is inside this room right now, somewhere along the line, you got yourself back. And if that's you, I want you to jump up and turn one time and give God a praise in this house. somebody say I'm not dancing right now because I'm a little overwhelmed but I promise you I'm at peace with myself and if you're at peace with yourself everybody that comes in contact with you is going to be blessed I dare hey, look at your neighbor and say it won't end like this put those hands together and give God praise 